since I had done a live stream of any variety. It's been an absolute forever. So I am going to draw today a little horse. I've only got an hour. I've got to go to work in an hour. So I thought I've just managed to figure out how to set up my stream again. Because it's been forever. I lost my cameras. I lost all the things. <laughs> so I thought, oh. So I spent about an hour trying to get it all sorted. But we're all good. We live to tell the tale. So I'm just going to start by drawing a little horse. Little screen on my other camera. I've got my, I had to reset up everything. I haven't had it set up for ages. So, so I'm just going to start. I thought I'd draw something fast, a little cowboy. And I might add watercolour. We'll see how we go. I'll get... All the proportions where I want them. Get his little neck down here. Get I'll draw his little bridle in a minute, but I'll just get I'll get all the rough shapes in and then I'll start to add the detail. Get all the shapes in first. Alright. Okay, so he's got a there's a cowboy sitting on him. And he's about the same height on his back from his head to his shoulder to about there. This is the cowboy. He's about the same. Um, draw his shirt. Hang on. That's his whole height. Because I've got to draw, actually change that. Got to change that. So I'll erase that little bit there. Top. His head, his cowboy hat. I've never been much good at drawing cowboy hats, but you know, if you want to get better, you've got to try it, eh? So, here we go. So, I've had to move his head because <laughs> his head was in the wrong spot, as you do. Um, not going to be a whole lot of detail on him. It's just a simple little. Give him a little collar. Maybe I've done him too small now. I'll figure it out. I can adjust and readjust anyway. That's the beauty of drawing with pencil. You can change things as you need to. I can hear my dog's barking at something outside. Draw his little hand. Actually, no, maybe I think I have done him a bit too small. But that's all right. We'll adjust. We'll adjust. But he's sitting back quite a fair way on the horse. <laughs> His head's way too small. <laughs> I'm just going to erase him. Maybe we'll just do the horse. Let's just do the horse. <laughs> oh, that's been, that's taken the easy way out. Okay, so his shoulders come that far up. Like that. I just, I'm just going to block in the shape so I can sort of see where everything needs to be. His legs come down here and they go just to about the horse's belly. Like that. I'll draw his head last because that'll be the easiest bit. That'll be the easiest bit, I reckon. Like that. And the horse's back end comes out there. Got to keep an eye on the watch. All right, so I'm happy with that. That's a bit better. I can adjust the arm out. I can start to change shapes. Once I've blocked in where I want things, you can adjust, move things around. I'll give him a little collar like that. And his head, that's a bit better. That's a bit better. And then I can draw the hat around the outside. I had to pick one that was looking at me, didn't I? Because I'm not real good at faces. <laughs> Did the first portrait in a long time. Um, yesterday, I did a portrait of Princess Catherine, which was fun to try and do, to draw, I think. But I'm not going to worry about too much detail. No idea what that was. Oh, it's Pippi, my dog. <laughs> 
All right, so then I'll draw his other arm out here. I'm going to draw this arm down this way a little bit and I'm going to have him holding a rope. So I'll draw all his rope in his hand because he's a proper cowboy in his whoops. Should make his rope a bit droopier like that. That's better. It's all wrapped around itself like that. And then get the horse's chest in. I'm going to go over this. I might go over this with Micron. I'm not decided. Micron pen because I do love pen. I'll draw his boot. He's got his jeans on there. And you can just see the toe of his boot. So draw the toe of his boot. Like that. Come down and around. I hope my sound's working okay. I'm sure you'd let me know if it wasn't, whoever's there. I'll draw the saddle in a minute. Because I've had to totally reset everything up. And he's an Aussie cowboy, so they use a stock saddle, which is slightly not the same as an American saddle. They're they're more like a all-purpose, but they've got um, knee rolls to hold help hold this the the rider when their horses are doing quick turns and things. And they've got different bridles to American horses. We've got, um, I think you guys. I don't even know. I forgot what they're called in American terminology. The they're like the training bridle. That we use but we use it all the time with a small snaffle bit which is just a plain old round ring bit like that so yeah this is the Australian cowboy draw his mane up there and I love a coloured horse I've got um, black and white horses and I've had Clyde Styles that have got brat you know they've got beautiful markings beautiful markings i have no idea what that was but anyway <laughs> something made a, a very loud noise um okay come down and around here draw his nostril i might even do a little rope nose bank as we do have so when you when you get off your horse and you want to give him a break you can tie them up so you have the lead rope wrapped around the neck like that and then you have it attached to the collar so that when you get off you can tie your horse to a tree and you've got your head collar and your lead rope already attached so then I'll do the main the rain sorry the rain coming up and around to that side because his hand is on the other side is holding it because his side's holding the rope so all the little things, it's fun to look at. I might even do this in, um, I might even do this in, so his head, neck, it's all about the same length. I've got to shorten his body a fraction. I've made the horse a little bit too long, but I can turn that last bit into his tail, so that's fine. So you can adjust, as you look at things, you can see what you need to change and rearrange things if you need to. And then, now his leg, I'm gonna. He's got a very pretty face, this horse. I'm just gonna extend his nose a little bit. Just a little bit, just enough. Now his legs are twice the length of his head. Whoops. So one, two. That's how I get the measurements. I measure everything against the head. Once I've drawn the head, I draw everything apart from that. And his body is one, two. So his head is one and then his body is another one so I still got it a little bit long but that's okay I can actually lengthen his head a fraction when I need to so yeah I, on any animal that I draw everything's measured against the head birds you name it it's all the same okay now this back leg They've got their knee joint there. It's a bit, little bit higher than the front one because their back legs, the cannon, which is a lower bone on their back leg, is slightly longer than the cannon on the front. No idea why, but that's just how they work. I'll draw his tail swishing. He wants a swishy tail. And then the other back leg has come forward a little bit like that. All right, 
it. Okay, I'll draw his feet as well. I won't draw him standing in the middle of nowhere. Um, I'm just having a quick look. I might thicken up. I'm going to make his head a bit bigger. I'm not 100% happy with his face, so I'm just going to extend that. I'll erase it, half of it. Leave the top part and extend just down a fraction. It just needs to be a little bit bigger and a little bit thicker. Like that. That's a bit better. I think that's a bit better. Change his eye a little bit. I'm gonna drop his eye down because now his head's a bit deeper. Like that. There we go. And I've got to drop the rain down like that. There we go. That's a bit better. I'm a bit happier with that. And then again, drop his little nose band from his halter. Attach the rain, the lead rain, like that. Okay, that's better. I'm happier with that. It's just that little tiny bit bigger, which is what I needed. Just a tiny fraction bit bigger. Now I can draw in the markings. I'm going to do this in. I'm going to use my micron pens, I think. I'm not even going to watercolour him. I'm going to micron pen him because... Why not? Draw his little hooves in. Actually, I'd love to do this in dip pen and ink. I should get my dip pen. I um, might get my dip pen and ink because I do love to do ink. And I haven't done an ink drawing in forever. So I'm just grab my little dip bowl. Little dip bowl. Got my dip pen. And I'll go over this guy with um, ink. I think. I think we'll do ink. Let's do that. Let's do that because I can get some beautiful colour, like shading patterns and things going with that. Draw his little hooves on like that. Okay, and then I'm going to draw his shadow over here because you can see his shadow coming from there. Doesn't have to be right, just roughly showing where things attach. Like that and I'll shade all that in now I've just got to grab my ink which is over here oops all my inks oh my gosh I can't even that it's too heavy that'll do oh don't want to knock over all my brushes I'm knocking everything over here we go so I've got my ink here I should probably have an apron on because I've got my work uniform on already because I thought I'll get dressed for work so that way I can do my stream once I get it going Use the right pen, India pen's always a good idea. <laughs> Just saying. And I am gonna start, I'll start with the horse. So I just dip my dip pen in the ink over here, like that. And just carefully, I'm gonna go around the outline of my horse. And I can add a little bit more detail too, like add the fuzzy sort of lines of the markings around his face marking, because that's a white stripe blaze they call that going down the front of his face i always loved horses with blazes always have something special about them I'll try and get what time is it 10 10 to 10 in the morning i have to leave here at 10 30 to get to work by 11. all right Add forelock like that. Add this eye. That. I can use little dots and stuff to create texture after. I'm just going to get the basic sort of outline in. Hello, Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I love dip pen and I'm limited on time today. So I thought I'll go to my favorite, favorite, favorite thing to do, which is draw. I was going to do watercolor, but then I started drawing this horse and was like, yeah, nah, I love ink. We'll just do ink. <laughs> so how are you, Chris? What's been happening? Whereabouts on the planet are you from? I haven't streamed in forever. This is my first stream in months. I've been inspired to get back into it again. I've been catching up with a few of my old mates on here. And um, 
I missed everyone. So it's nice. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna, I've got to make the time. I've just got to make the time, not be too busy. And come back and hang out with everyone. Because it has been forever. But I'm all inspired. So hopefully I can create a new routine. And get my butt into gear. <laughs> all right. And for the other side of the horse, I'm literally just going to do, I'm not going to fill it in solid. I'm just going to do little dots close together. And this is a medium size dip pen. So medium nib on it. And it's, I've, I've used two nibs in, um, from Denmark. Oh, awesome. It was here probably years ago. Yeah, it has been. It's been a long time, mate. Glad to see you're still doing good. I'm great. Thank you. I'm doing good. I started work again. That was the thing. I started, I went back to work. And because um, after COVID, everything got back to normal and I've just struggled with getting a routine back. I still do my art every day, but I just have struggled to go live. You know, I've been just making my making my art and doing it like pre-filming it and sticking it on YouTube, but not hanging out with anyone, just making it for for videos. But it's just not the same. It's far nicer chatting to people. <laughs> Far nicer. So what's it like in Denmark at the moment? Because you guys are coming into summer. We're coming out of summer. Art every day? Yeah. I try to do art at least an hour every day. At least an hour. So even if it's only 20 minutes, if I can get only 20 minutes in, it's better than nothing. Even if it's just a quick sketch, it makes me happy. It makes my soul happy to draw every day. I feel lost without it. It's like reading a book. It's my reward to myself is to draw. And, you know, even if it is just a quick picture and very fast, it doesn't matter. It just still makes me feel good. Okay, so I've actually made his legs a little bit short now. I've got to lengthen his legs, but because it's a pencil drawing, I can actually do that just freehand. I'm just going to take his legs down. Because once his ink is dry, I can just erase the old pencil lines. So I'm just lengthening his legs. It's changing weather. Yeah, we're just coming out of summer here and into autumn. But we've had the weirdest year. We've had the weirdest weather. We've had, like, I don't know, are you Fahrenheit or Celsius? We're Celsius here. And so we've had a week of 40-odd degrees and then storms. And then this week we've had cool nights of like now we're back down to about mid-20s. Winter is barely over, but it's supposed to be 20 Celsius. Yes. Yeah, this weekend here, we're the end of summer, but I think this weekend we're going to be at 30 Celsius, which is I, I can I can deal with 30. I have I struggle with 40. 40 is too hot. But we've had a couple of weeks of really, really super duper hot and it was yucky. So I, I'm, I love the cooler weather. I love that you guys get snow and stuff. Like, I would love to live in a cold country, a cooler country, much cooler climate. It gets too bloody hot here. <laughs> Way too hot. Um, can't even imagine. Oh, yeah, there's some days you just can't, you can't do anything. It's, you can't go outside. It's just too hot. And I've got bird baths everywhere for all the wild birds. And <laughs> It was really funny. The other day it was really hot. And um, I had all these little wild birds. I put out a giant, like a chicken water thing. It was a big chicken trough and it had a big thing of water in it. And all the little birds were flip-flopping around and having baths. And, yeah, it was awesome. We were sitting on the back veranda watching them all play in the water. Because we don't, we haven't, I mean, we've had storms. We haven't really had rain. Take care of the wildlife. Yeah, oh, my God. We've got tons of wildlife at the moment. We've got so many kangaroos. And because I live on a farm, so we've got a ton of wildlife around, all the cockatoos, all the wild birds, parrots, parakeets, kookaburras, tons of kookaburras. Yes, we do. We actually had a family of kookaburras, um, but their babies have grown up now, so they've wandered off. And echidnas, wombats, but mainly kangaroos. We just get a ton of kangaroos, like hundreds at the back of our farm because we feed, we've got horses. So we chuck big bales out, big round bales of hay because the grass is all dried off and all the kangaroos come in and eat the hay. 
you know, they come in and they'll, you'll, we'll look out the back. And we've actually got to go out and clap our shoes to get, like, pick up a pair of shoes, slap them together to scare the kangaroos away because the kangaroos come right up and they eat me vegetables. <laughs> so we don't want to eat me veggies, so we have to scare them off. But there's hundreds and hundreds of them. But, yeah, they come up and eat the horses. Hey, and because we've got water troughs as well, they've got water supply because we've got the water troughs for the horses. So all the wildlife comes up and uses our water troughs as well out the back, which is pretty cool. It is lovely. We are very, very, very lucky. Very lucky. And we have a few koala. We've had a couple of koalas out the front, but they're getting rarer. They're, they're more rare now. You don't see them so much because the trees are not so common anymore, the gum trees. Or not their type of gum tree anyway. And tons of spiders and tons of lizards. <laughs> <laughs> They're not so nice things. All right, so I am going to now, I can start with, like, all you do to get the different effects on with dip pen is get lighter. So you just hold it less heavy, less pressure on the paper. And I use watercolour paper. Well, that's funny. I have snails eating my veggies. Kangaroos are not an issue I have ever imagined. Yes, kangaroos, are kangaroos they love their veg. And we've got tons of rabbits as well. Lots and lots of rabbits. But yeah, they 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 love the 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 green pick of the the fresh little growth on the tops, and they love the fresh grass in the paddocks as well. When we get because we grow lots and lots of like we grow our own hay, and they come in when that's all nice and fresh. Thank you. It's good fun. It's so relaxing. That's why I thought I would do. Oh, I forgot his reins. That's why I thought I would do a dip pen drawing because it's simple. Woo and you don't need anything special. You can, I mean, I was going to actually use um, micron pens, but you can just get the you put different pressure on with a dip pen, and you get the different strokes, and it's it's just so good. So because you can get different thickness marks, and the the, the be that's the beauty of a dip pen is the marks, parallel lines. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it takes a while. But, I've, I mean, I still watch a lot of videos and learn. I, I, like I love watching the, the dudes that do the pointillism. You know, they do the tiniest little dots on their work and they're so patient. It's insane. Like they just they can spend hours just doing the teeniest, tiniest little dots. Uh, and a dip pen is just much less wasteful and like in touch with human history. Yes. And I, I love that. I've got a collection of dip pens. I've got the traditional one. I've got some beautiful dip pens. Where are they? Are they handy? Uh, they're not really handy. I'll have to... Oh, no, they are handy. Hang on. I'll show you my favourite, favourite dip pen. I think it's this one. Oh, it's this one, yeah. I'll show you how beautiful this dip pen is. Look at this. She's silver with a feather. How beautiful is that? I haven't used it, obviously. One day I will, but it's a proper quill. And I bought that in that box set, and it's just the most gorgeous, gorgeous-looking thing. Like, it's just stunning. And I got that at a, a pen specialty shop because I love me pens. I'm trying to get it to show you better. Yeah, oh, hang on. And you can see the carving on the... Oh, it's a pewter. So you can see the carving on the pewter. It's just beautiful. So that's my favourite, favourite pen. But um, I know it's gorgeous. And I've got a glass one which is a oh, shady glass one. Got it from the same shop. So this is a blue glass one, which is really pretty. And it's got the, the silver end. And I have used that one and it's gorgeous, but it's quite heavy. That's the only thing about the glass one. It's heavy. And this is a tachy, like $20. It's, it's heavy. It's too heavy, but it's pretty. <laughs> so, you know, it's a small sacrifices. But this one is made of bamboo, I think super light and it's really well balanced it's really easy to hold yeah it's really pretty but really heavy and the feather ones are same it's got a, the, the nibs the heavy weight and the rest of it's really light and balanced because i love pens and you really do have to find like i suppose it's like any tool it's got to be balanced you know like my husband and daughter are blacksmiths and they've got all their, their rasps and things and they make them themselves because they've got to be balanced and they have them, like, because my husband's a really big man and my daughter's not as big as him, so they've got different size tools, different size hands. So, and pens, the same kind of thing. It's your tools. You've got to have tools that fit you. 
But I recommend, highly recommend Tachikawa. Highly recommend Tachikawa pens, dip pens. That's so cool. They're very rare. They're, I mean, they're not as rare in Australia because we have a lot more out back, a lot more horses, a lot more animals that need their feet taken care of. And my husband's a blacksmith first, but a farrier. So um, he does horses' feet, cattle's feet, camel's feet, you name it. And my daughter as well, they travel together. And they've got tons of work around. They work dawn till dark, Monday to Friday. So they've got a ton of work, which is very lucky. It's a rare trade, dying trade. But, um, yeah, both of my husband and daughter do it. But, yeah, they make their own tools and all that sort of stuff. It is pretty cool. It is very cool. It is very cool. It's fun to watch them working out when they've got their, their forge and that going out. We've got a forge set up out in the shed. And they get out there and they make stuff, and it's really cool. Okay, so that's his collar. So now I can start to add a little bit of detail like that. And then I'll draw, I'll give him a bit of a pattern on his shirt. Why not? Let's do that. Give him his, he looks a bit boxy. I've got him looking a bit square. Which trays like that was a lot more still. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not as common here anymore either. We have a couple of festivals around Melbourne or around Victoria um, once a year where blacksmiths all get together and they do displays and things. And there's a special town up north that has like a setup um where you can go and watch them it's it's like a display for a blacksmith shop which is really cool but you know we quite often when we go whenever we go there we go and just stand around and watch the other dudes do their work because they make wagon wheels and all the really traditional stuff scott doesn't do the wagon wheels he can but making barrels and things but um yeah, our guys do a lot of welding, a lot of a lot of metal work. Making tools, making knives and things. Alright, so I've got his legs on. Now I'm having a quick look. I mean he's not exactly right, he's a fast sketch because I'm limited on time. Excuses, excuses, eh? <laughs> now I hate I'm really not good at faces, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and be a bit cheeky. Love to see that. I didn't know people even still knew how to make wagon. Oh, yeah. There's, if you Google um, Sovereign Hill, Australia, so it's S-O-V-R-E-I-G-N-H-I-L-L, -L, Sovereign Hill, uh, um, and you Google the blacksmith. It might, there, there'll be videos online from there because they have the full wagons, um, they have the proper, they have the Clydesdales on display, so they have Clydesdale carriage rides and stuff. So, that, But they maintain them all as if they would have in the old days. They have glass blowers. Like I got um, my the, the, the top of my wedding cake. They hand blew horses and carriages for me in a day. It was amazing. So they've got, and they make traditional food, traditional lollies, sweets. Um, they have a traditional, like, going back 200-year restaurant. And they serve you with all the old, they old, they all old dress. It's like a traditional town. They just stopped the clock two hundred years ago. It's amazing, and the old mines and everything, because it's a mine, Australian mining area, at the gold mines. So you can go down the mines. You can buy, you can get gold. You can actually pan for gold. We have gold panning. Sounds like my kind of vibe. It is an amazing place. It is an amazing place. And we also have Cryle Castle which they have jousting, and I love jousting as well, like with horses because we're horse people, but they're amazing. And they have, so if you look at K-R-Y-A-L, Cryal Castle, they also are amazing, but they go back to like medieval stuff. They're more medieval, but they have they're jousting. It's so amazing to watch. So I've just given him a handlebar moustache <laughs> by accident. I didn't mean to do that, but oops. Oops. He's got a handlebar moustache now. What time is it? 10 past 10. Ooh, I've got to go in a minute. I'm going to be... So this is like fast. I'm trying to draw fast so I can get... I've got to draw the shadows under his waist. The face turned out nice like the moustache. <laughs> yes. uh, it was an accident, but what could I say? 
It was supposed to be his mouth, and then it went. It just became a mustache because I made it a little bit long. But anyway, you live and learn, hey? Very 1883. Yes. Uh, actually, the, the other the other night, Scott and I watched um, Tombstone. That's a great movie. Oh my gosh, that is such a good movie. Loved the movie Tombstone. Okay, so that's that. Now, I'm going to give him a scarf because they used to wear like bandanas and things. Okay, so he's got that. So you can see I'm starting to build up now. I'll start to build up the shadows. And the more ink you put on and the heavier you press, it creates stronger, stronger shades. And you can also use a brush. You can also use a brush, which I have done on occasion. I, like in Inktober, I love to do Inktober. And I tend to try and do dip pen when I do. And you can, I do ink washes and ink. I might give that a pattern. Because, you know, they had pattern shirts. Give him patterns. Because why not? Let's do that. Uh, it's going to be such a nice moody cowboy piece. Oh, I, I did one ages ago for last Inktober, October. And I did a whole scene of, like, the mountains with the cowboy herding the horses and um, I did it in washes, ink washes. But I had the horses, the trees, the horses down the furthest field in the distance and I was really happy with it. it turned out really well and I very rarely do large scale, very rarely do I use do a large scale drawing. I usually do lots of little ones like this but it was quite a large scale job. Such mad doing horses in dip pen <laughs> oh, can't help myself i just i've always loved horses i've always drawn horses horses have been my first like they were the first thing i ever drew my first memories of drawing as a little kid was drawing horses because my grandma was a mad horse person my grandpa on my boat on both sides grandma and grandpa were horse people so and they were from that era that they had horses, you know. They but they had carriages when they, when my grandparents were born in the nineteen hundreds. So they still had horses here, still used them for transport. So um, yeah. So I I grew up sort of surrounded by people who just loved horses and at art. Okay, so I'm just going to fill in. I haven't drawn his saddle blanket. That's because in Australia we use saddle blankets. So that's it's like a saddle pad, but they're thinner because we have lighter saddles. I'll just draw a little bit of a pattern on that because why not? Draw a little bit. Shout out Bear Bear. My dog's barking. I've got two little Jack Russells. Pippi's outside. She's barking at the kangaroos, I think. What time is it? Okay, so I'm going to quickly quickly try and get the shadow in i'm going to try and i'm going to try and stream from this i've got to work all day tomorrow so it's not going to happen tomorrow but i might even stream again tonight after i finish work but i'm going to try and do monday to fridays if i can because we've got easter this weekend here in australia it's easter weekend i don't know whether it is on your side of the planet that's my dog start barking yeah <laughs> Yeah, my dogs are hopeless. They bark the whole time because there's so many animals around for them to run around after. All right. Now, I'm going to, for the rope, I'm just going to do squiggly lines. Just squiggly lines to make it look more like rope. Whoops, like that. He's got the reins in the hand on the other side. You can't see it. Yeah, my, the dog's funny when my, the dogs are watching TV. And, um, yeah, they'll start barking if a dog on TV barks exactly the same so i'm just going to draw their little hooves in i'm actually going to cheat a little bit i'm going to grab my brush i'm going to grow really really fine watercolor brush how are you i'm literally trying to do it the fastest stream on earth trip <laughs> jenny's book i hope to be i hope to be doll i haven't been in ages and i miss it and i keep saying that but i've been so busy at work we've had i've had lots of extra hours so I haven't had a chance, but I'm going to make make a habit of it now. So, And that's another thing with drawing. Try and do your... Lana! Oh, my God! Oh, that's okay. Um, I just asked Christmas.
Chris, do you stream? And Lana's another mate who I met on YouTube. Like, we've known each other forever. Beautiful drawer. Beautiful. And streams on Twitch now. So shout out to Lana as well. Um, 29.8. Yeah. Gosh. And I think it was Inktober was the first time. I'm still in touch with Rory, but I haven't seen her in ages. Um, so, yeah, I'm just doing I, – I, I was limited on time today, so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do – a horse, a simple horse. I'll do, actually, I'm going to do it. What time have I got? I've got 15 minutes. <laughs> that shadow is marvellous. Thank you. And I'm just going to pop in some trees in the background. I'll give him a background. I wasn't going to, but I'm going to. And you just do squiggles. It's just squiggles. And you can add, same as watercolour, a bit, bit darker in the bottom when it's, while it's still wet and it'll all flow around and create patterns and stuff. The only one I made it through. <laughs> yeah, I've done it a few times now. I'm a glutton for punishment. But, um, and I've been following your work on Instagram, Lana. It's gorgeous. So anyone who's not followed, Trip is just a dude, an awesome dude. Does art and games and all kinds of things. And cooks and does all the fun things. And Lana is a gorgeous, gorgeous watercolourist. And also has her own line, or has her own website, Um with all our info and watercolour information and she's a font of knowledge. So I'm just adding trees in the background. I thought this would just help to give it a bit of guts, give the picture a bit of guts. Oh, it makes me happy. I always, because we've got such similar tastes. Lana and I are very similar in our taste of subjects. And we actually did, really funny, about, about a month ago, we did... We used the same reference picture and we actually had the same bunny rabbits. <laughs> it was really funny. We had a bit of a giggle, or I had a bit of a giggle. Because I was like, oh, I did that. I think I did something similar to that. And I looked it up. I was like, oh, my God, it's the same picture. <laughs> uh, great minds think alike, Dale. Great minds think alike. So, yeah, so I'm going to leave some of that shadow. I'll, so it's darker into the distance. So I'll make it a bit darker up here. And that also gives you contrast. And I'll draw a little fence. I'm going to draw a little fence because why not? Using the very tip of my brush like that and go beep, 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 beep. And then another little fence there. Okay, so there we go. We have a background. Our styles are very, very similar. Okay, so I'm just going to add quickly add in some shadow into the darkest parts of the horse. So I'm literally, I'm just adding water to my ink. I can even go into the ink that's on the page, adding water into it, and I'll take it down the legs on the ends, anywhere that there's a shadow. So that the back leg is all dark, because it's all in shade. Like that. Can't believe how you just churned out a shadow in the background in a couple of minutes. <laughs> about 40 years of practice, mate. I'm an old girl, and about lots of years of practice. I've been doing watercolour for... Uh, at least 25 years, 30 years. But I've drawn for 45. Haven't posted a lot in a while. Yeah, me either. Me either. You're not alone. We're all in the same struggle, I think. Lana's very motivated. I know you've been streaming and doing well. Because I, I, every so often I, I can't, I can't, like I haven't got, I usually put you on while I'm having dinner. Because <laughs> you're on at my dinner time. So I get to watch. But you've been doing great, which is awesome. But I can't, I can't stay up late. Like I just, oh, I can't stream at night. I wish I could because I just get too tired. I'll get on and chat, or I'll get on and watch. But I'm just too tired to do anything. I see what I've done there. I've made his face too dark, so I'm just going to add water. Actually, I can probably just blot that with with my cloth. Yep, there we go. So I blotted him back. I'm just going to make him stronger coloured. Add. Bit of bit of ink to a lot of water. Just a little bit of ink to a lot of water because I don't want him to be too... I want his, this side to be lighter than the shadows. But it's, so it's very, very, very diluted wash. Okay, so now I'm going to fill in his tail. Fuss that around. Give him a bit of fluffy tail. And now he's darker on his little nose. Give him a little bit of a dark muzzle. And darken up his mane. We should make him a bay, shouldn't we? So a dark brown horse. I was going to make him a coloured horse. 
but I won't. Pinto or a paint or something, but I won't. I'm just going to do him. It's so good. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, it's, it's very fast and it's not very, it's very light detail. I'll just darken up the inside of his jeans. It's just a fun sketch, just so I could hang out with you guys for an hour. Because <laughs> I was itching to, I needed to. But it took me, I went to be on ages ago, but then I, because I, I haven't used Twitch in so long, I hadn't used Streamlabs in so long, I'd lost all my everythings. So I had to reset everything up. And do you think I could do it? No. Nah. I couldn't get it. It took me an hour just to set up my cameras and stuff. And I'm still not 100% sure if I've got everything working right, but I might. Oh, well, I'll just have to jump on again and try, hey, <laughs> and keep going. So I'm just going to pop some more leaves on this tree over here. Like that. Get a bit more detail in those. Get a bit more shadow in the background. And you can layer ink just like watercolour. I've got to get my dip pen again. And I'm just going to add... Values I found the hardest thing to learn. What do you say? I reckon learning the values, like the lights to dark, was one of the hardest things I ever had to learn. And, like, it, yeah, I could draw, but I couldn't. It took me years to learn how to do shadows and learn how to do the tones. So I'm now, I've actually, shadows are super dark. So I'm going to actually go really scary dark on here and create a scary dark shadow because the darkest dark is your shadow. Like that. So I'll make him very dark. Then you connect it to the feet like that. Connect that one. And that's why also if you want to learn tonal values like your lights and darks, your best bet is to um, do it with one colour. Pick one colour and practice your tonal values with one colour. It makes takes all the stress out of it because then you can just focus on light and dark and it's that simple. With colours, it adds a whole different um, scenario of problems. Okay. Now, I could really darken up. I wish I didn't have to go to work because this is fun. I love this. This is my happy place. I was going to darken up. My old, I had an art friend, Art. I used to go to an art group in Sunbury, a place near us, and um, he used to say, whatever you think you've gone dark enough, go darker. Values are relative image. Uh, it, it, easy for me because, probably because colorblind. Oh, see? You see everything in tone. There you go. See? every Even things that you think aren't a gift are a gift. So there you go. That actually makes perfect sense, though, Mim. That makes perfect sense. And just knowing where to put your shadows, knowing where your darkest darks are. But, yeah, always, whatever you think is dark enough, go darker. I was always told that, and it really does work. Because that's like, that shadow looked okay, but it needed to be darker. Um, your friend is so right. Yes, even when it looks right, go darker. And, and you always laugh because you'd always walk past when I'd be doing a piece of work and he'd say to me, so do you reckon you're dark enough? And I'm like, no, I've got to go darker. And I was always scared because you think you like something and then you stop and you can't. You've got to keep pushing it because you can always do it. Worst scenario, you get to create another piece of art. And he's super dark under his legs here. So I was going to really strengthen that shadow. The shadow under there, that's a saddle, but you can't really see it. But I'm going to add that in dark. I know, it really helps, doesn't it? I th I'd never really thought of that as a concept, but it works. <laughs> but it would be easier to be colour blind, to see your tonal values. I struggle with blues. I can't see blues properly. Blues, to me, are purple. And, and, and greens are blue. Like, I struggle with blue and green. So that's why if I do an oil painting or anything, it all looks way more vibrant than it should. It all looks way more vibrant. Because I tend to go brighter. So I struggle. That's the, the thing I struggle with most, which is why I struggled, why it was the hardest for me to learn. With, with like Not so much in black or white, but in colour. Tonal values in colour was terrifying. <laughs> but I just went back to black and white and it was a world of easy. But I reckon I'm going to call that done. I'm going to call that done. I know I could do a whole lot more, but I've got to go to work. Dang it. Dag nab it. So I'm just going to strengthen up the shadows here a little bit. I'm just going to take them 
Just you can you can add layers with 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 ink. I just treat it exactly the same as watercolor and add layers. He's got a white blaze, so I'm not going to worry about that. <clears throat> I'm going to add a bit more ink into this chest here. Just little blobs of ink. Uh, I've got a shadow up the inside of that front leg. I can, I can shadow up his hooves. And I'm going to sign it and say that is done. Like that. So, and do a doodah. Do my little 24, because it's 2024. Oh my God, we're almost at the next month. We're all almost at April. That's so scary. <laughs> So that is my little ink sketch for today. So thank you, Chris, Trip, Lana, Mimic, everyone for hanging out. It's been awesome being back with you guys. Time flies, I know. And it's time flies, I've got to go to work. <laughs> it does. The year's going so fast. It's ridiculous. And as you get older, it gets faster and faster. That was super quick. Thank you. Yes, well, so I've literally, how long was it? Uh... 49 minutes that was 50 or 50 minutes from start to finish i could do i could do a lot more i could do a lot more but i just wanted to hang out with you guys and have a bit of fun see you all thank you so much for hanging out it's awesome i've missed you guys it's so good to see you again and i will see you very very soon watch out for me to be live i'll pop on as often as i can okay i'll catch you later see you guys